Good morning, and welcome this morning to the Agunquit Baptist Church online as we come together over the internet to give thanks and praise to Almighty God, to sing out our praises, our thanksgiving with gratitude to the Lord, God our Father, and Jesus Christ his Son, who loves us and came into the world for us and went to a cross for us. Praise be to his holy name for his love and grace that he's given us. Welcome as we worship together today. And now let's sing our praises to the Lord this morning with our hymn for today, number 526 in your hymnal if you happen to have one at home, Victory in Jesus. The lyrics will appear on your screen. Let's sing God's praise. And now would you join me in prayer? Thank you, Lord. We thank you with gratitude in our hearts for all the good things that you have given to us. You have poured out on us every good and perfect gift that we enjoy. And we thank you for your love and your grace, for walking with us through this difficult time and all difficult times. 
Father, we ask that you would continue to walk with all those who are sick from COVID-19, that you would bless them with healing, with those who are caring for them, with those who are seeking a vaccine, that they would be swiftly successful. And Lord, with those who've been uh, affected uh, financially because of the shutdown, bless them and help them to get through, we pray. And Father, hear our prayer for our elected officials and leaders, that you would bless them with wisdom and guidance, that they would see the path you have laid before them and walk it. Father, during a, a troubling time of, of some turmoil here in our nation, we ask, Lord, for your peace to be poured out on all of us, that we might be filled with love for our neighbors, that we might follow Jesus in the footsteps of peace in all that we do. Father, hear our prayer also for all those on our prayer list. We ask in the name of Jesus that you would give your help to each one, pour out healing and your assistance and guidance on everybody who needs it, Lord. Father, thank you for your love and care. With hearts full of gratitude, we lift up our voices and our spirits and our minds to you, O holy God. In the name of Christ, we pray all this. Amen. If you would like to give a gift to the Agunquit Baptist Church, or you are able to continue with your planned giving during this time, then that would be greatly appreciated. And you can send a check to the church's post office box, which is box 874, Agunquit, Maine, 03907. You also can give through bill pay at your bank. And instructions on how to do that can be found on our website, agunquitbaptistchurch.org. We are also uh, asking and encouraging everyone to give to the Mark Thalander Foundation today. Mark has been with us since May and has worked diligently using his talents to help us to, to have some really great music all summer. So if you have enjoyed and been uplifted and blessed by all of our music th throughout the summer, we would ask and encourage you to give to the Mark Thalander Foundation today. And you can do that through the church. If you write a check to the church and put in the memo, Mark Thalander Foundation, then we will uh, collect those funds and send them to the Mark Thalander Foundation. Thank you, Mark, for all of your hard work this summer and for your talent, sharing your talent with us, and for your diligence and commitment to excellence. It's been a real pleasure to have you with us, and we are going to have him with us for a little bit longer uh, until he returns to California. You may know of Mark Thalander's amazing story of his terrible injury and how his faith helped him to get through it all and to recover and even to start a new ministry, the Mark Thalander Foundation, which puts on concerts and supports music around the world. Well, here are a couple of clips. One uh, is an ABC News uh, interview done with Mark and another are some words from uh, Dr. Schuler of the Crystal Cathedral that tell his amazing story and how God helped him to get through all of this and start the Mark Thalander Foundation. I remember thinking that it was like a ride at Disneyland, only it didn't stop. It just kept going, and uh, I just didn't know what was happening. And then everything stopped. It was no amusement ride. A rainy August 3rd, 2003. Nighttime, Wells Tollbooth. Mark Thalander's car hydroplanes and crashes. Mark is sitting alone, more than half his blood draining from his left side. I prayed, God, if there's anything I should do, you know, help me. And this arm then went over and into a hole here which I think may have stopped the gushing 
of the blood. What Mark didn't know, his left arm had been all but torn off in the crash. Paramedics and state troopers say there were no witnesses. But Mark says there was a woman who kept him alive and today believes it may have been his guardian angel. The woman kept talking to me and saying, keep your eyes open, keep talking to me. It was so twisted and mangled. And I was just amazed that you lived through it at all. Lifelong friend Gary Duvall arrived at Maine Medical Center shortly after surgeons made the critical decision to remove Mark's arm. The surgeon was virtually in tears. Because this was no ordinary patient. This was Mark Thalander, world-renowned organist. His beautiful music you've likely heard. His was the music that filled Robert Schuller's Crystal Cathedral and his Hour of Power telecast for more than a decade. Two hands, two feet, delicately, delightfully playing what Mark calls God's music. This is not a story of sadness, rather a story of triumph over tragedy, a story of inspiration. The music you're hearing now comes from one hand and two feet, Mark Thalander. I had to incorporate the left hand part either into my right hand or to my left foot or into my right foot, depending on on the measure and on the piece. Doctors say it usually takes several years for a patient to fully master life without a limb. Mark did it in three months, teaching himself to play the organ again for his father's memorial service. And I just began playing a hymn with one hand and adding some of the 16-foot stops on the organ into the pedals. And uh, a woman came in from another church who had sung in the Crystal Cathedral Choir and she had tears rolling down her face and she said I can't believe you're playing with one hand it sounds like you have two and so I thought well maybe if I really work at this I can continue to play the organ it took a little bit of work but I think that it turned out so that I can lead congregations in worship and they um, may not know that there's anything lacking. That would be my, my hope and my prayer. And Mark admits after August 3rd, something changed in his music. Maybe there's more of, um, more passion and uh, more uh, thankfulness in my playing now because um, I don't take anything for granted. Visitors reception located in the hospitality center. And uh, again, let me repeat, Mark touches this. I had a daughter that lost legs. And she was a runner. And you lost an arm and you're an organist. Why? We've got the faith for you, don't we? And you're showing it. You're turning your scars into stars. You've become the world's most famous one-armed organist.
Colossians 3, 15 through 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Bless the reading of this, his holy word. It is a weekend of music here at the Ugunquit Baptist Church. We are presenting our Labor Day weekend concert this weekend online here on our YouTube channel, and it will be in two parts. The first half of the concert will be posted tonight at 7 p.m., and the second tomorrow night at 7 p.m. With Mark Thallander's assistance, we have put together a really wonderful concert this year, and I'd like to thank Mark and all of the excellent musicians who have participated. The videos will remain up on YouTube for you to check out and enjoy anytime. It is good to sing and make music to the Lord. It is excellent to praise him with voices raised in song. It is a worthy offering to make a joyful noise to our God with stringed instruments and horns and woodwinds and drums and shouting. Why? Why is it good to make music to God? Why are we encouraged in the scriptures to sing to him? Why do we want to praise him in song? Well, it's because knowing God makes us want to sing and make music with gratitude to him. Knowing him makes us want to sing and make music to our God because we're grateful. We're grateful for his love. Grateful for his love. Think about that person in your life, that most important person, the person who loves you and whom you love. Aren't you grateful for them? Aren't you grateful to them? Maybe it's a spouse or a parent or a child or a sibling or, or a grandparent. Maybe it's a really great friend. Think about all their dedication, how they were with you, when you were down, how they stood by you in times of trouble, all the good things they've done for you, all the love they've shown you, even when sometimes maybe you didn't quite deserve it. Now consider this. God created that person and arranged for them to be in your life because he loves you. He loves you even more than they do. He wants to be, he is that important person in your life who cares, who is devoted, and who loves you greatly. Uh, I'm a child of the 80s, as you know, and I grew up uh, listening to 80s music, and I still listen to it, and I, I just happened to turn on the radio yesterday when I was on my way home from the church, and uh, Elton John was on the radio. It was an 80s radio station. And it was one of my favorite Elton John songs from before the 80s, actually, but I used to listen to it back then. It's called Your Song. And as I was listening to that, the, the main line in it just kept, you know, he just keeps singing it. It just come and kept coming out at me, coming back to me. And I remember this story about how his lyricist, Barry Taupin, who had been, become his good friend, wrote the words to that song for Elton John when he was feeling down to tell him about how he had come to feel about their friendship with one another. And it goes like this. I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind that I put down in words how wonderful life is while you're in the world. <laughs> what a wonderful line, what a wonderful sentiment. When Elton John read those words, it made him want to sing because of the care of his friend. And it struck me as I was driving. That's how God feels about us. That's how he feels about us. That's how he wants us to feel about him. So much so that he says, I hope you don't mind, but I wrote it down in words. Here are some of those words. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. He so loved us that he became a man and he came into this world and he went to a cross for us and gave himself there. He gave himself so that we could be reconciled to him, so we could have eternal life, not for no reason, not just to live, but to live with him forever and ever. Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful life it is with you in it. It makes us want to sing with gratitude and thanksgiving to you. We sing and we make music to God because knowing God makes us want to sing and make music with gratitude in our hearts to him. Sing and make music to our God because we're grateful. We're grateful that he is with us. Do you do puzzles? If you are going to try to put together a, a big complicated puzzle, like say a 5,000 piecer, what do you need? Well, the biggest thing you need is a picture of the final product, right? I mean, without that, it's practically impossible to do one of those puzzles. Have you ever try to do one of those puzzles when you've lost the picture? Good luck. Well, God has not left us in this fallen, complicated world to try to piece together our lives without a picture of how to do life in a place like this right. He's given us an example of how to live, how to live in love and in wisdom and in peace, even in the most difficult of circumstances. For he came into the world himself and lived such a life. He went to a cross and suffered there and was victorious through it, even in those terrible circumstances. We don't simply have a set of rules to follow from God. We have a life lived to watch to take it as an, as an example, a life of love and of wisdom and of peace in terrible difficulty that we can look to and follow as an example for us. The picture we can use to put together the puzzle of our lives is Jesus Christ, our Savior. So let the Word of God, the Bible, that tells us about Him and how He lived and what He did and what He taught us, let it Dwell richly in you, our scripture tells us. And the Spirit of God is with us also. The designer of the puzzle lives with us and in us. And we can look to him as we place each piece. So sing and make music to God. We're grateful that he's with us. He's not left us without help to live in love, wisdom, and peace in a fallen world. He's given us the picture of the puzzle of how to put together a satisfying life. Sing and make music to God because we are grateful to him. Knowing him makes us want to sing and make music with gratitude in our hearts. Sing and make music to God. We're grateful to him for the peace that he gives us. Here are two things that people want in life, I think. First, people want to be accepted. They want to be cared for and loved and valued and respected. And secondly, people want to know how to live, right? What to do, how to live with wisdom, how to do what's right, how to live in love. Well, God has given us both of those things through faith in Jesus, his Son. First, we're part of his church, his family. Actually, our scripture says it's a closer relationship than even that, even closer than family. Our scripture says that we're members of one body, his body. We are united to God in the most profound way, and we're connected to one another through faith. And God has given us this closeness, this acceptance, 
this love as a free gift through faith in Jesus, his son. And we have the peace of knowing how to live, what to do. He's given us his wise example to follow. If we follow Jesus, we will know how to live well, even in this fallen world. How to be truly successful. How to make a real difference to the people in our lives. How to please God, our Father. For Jesus did all those things, and we can follow him in doing them. Now that is something to sing about. Knowing God, knowing him, knowing his love and care, his wisdom for living, his peace, being accepted by and united to him, it makes you want to sing and make music to him with gratitude in your heart. So sing, make music with hymns, psalms, and spiritual songs to the Lord. Or as one famous hymn puts it, praise Laud and bless his name always, for it is seemly so to do. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, we pour out our thanksgiving with our, our gratitude to you today, Lord, lifting up our hearts and our minds and our souls and our voices to give thanks to you. Lord, you are worthy of praise and thanksgiving and of all music with singing lifted up to you, O oh, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your love and for your care and for your guidance. Lord, help us to grasp onto it all, reflect your love back to you, and walk in victory even in troubling times. In the name of Christ, we pray all this. Amen. We are celebrating the Lord's Supper today, and so this would be a good time to pause the video and go and prepare your own elements at home so you can participate and partake along with us. Communion, the Lord's Table. This is something to sing about, something to rejoice with gratitude. For Jesus Christ came into the world for us and gave himself, the ultimate act of love. If you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he invites you to this table with us today. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus was celebrating the Passover in an upper room with his disciples. While they were eating, he took bread. He gave thanks and praise to God our Father in heaven. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you join me in prayer? Thank you, Lord, for this bread. Thank you for your body that you gave for us on the cross. As we eat, bless it to our bodies and faith to our souls. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Take and eat and remember the body of Christ broken for us. When supper was ended, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and praise to God our Father in heaven. He gave the cup to his disciples and he said, take this, all of you, and drink it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant it will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you join me in prayer? Thank you, Lord, for this cup, 
for your blood that you freely and willingly gave for us. Lord, as we drink of this cup together today, we thank you for the new covenant that you made, that we might be made righteous in your sight through faith in Jesus Christ, reconciled to you. Thank you for loving us so much that you did all of that for us. Help us to grasp hold of it by faith in him. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Take and drink and remember the blood of Christ shed for us. Amen. And now we're going to end our communion service in our traditional way by singing the first verse of Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining us for Agonquit Baptist Church online. Have a healthy and blessed week.